sorry for the. Can everybody hear me? Let me just check this out. Hold on. Loud and clear. Great. Uh, welcome to the Do Nothing Project. My apologies for the delay. Um, doing this one at home because it's family stuff. Um, uh, good to be with everybody. Really want this. Looking forward to this meditation. Good to see the community. Hey, Annette. Hey, Siobhan. Hey, Valentina, Carolyn, Ovi once, Jeff, Jennifer, Andrew, thanks for moderating. Um, uh, so I was thinking, uh, I, um, <clears throat> if you've never been to Do Nothing Project before, this is it. Uh, a regular community of friends, really, from all around. Uh, and a lot of people listen to it afterwards in different time zones and listen to it now in different time zones. So uh, very happy to have you here. Um I'm uh, normally this meditation is variation on nothing whatsoever. And in fact, this will continue. This will be what the tradition will continue tonight. But I did have kind of a, I was thinking about a, um, a focus. I know for myself, I'm really feeling the need to be more focused in my life. And um, I kind of clear on things I need to do. And I, and meditation can be really helpful some in this way beyond just the ordinary ways that meditation can get helpful, uh, can be helpful around, you know, seeing your stuff and getting settled. There's really the concentration aspect of practice is um, in ch times like this, when I really need to focus, I find doing a really being more deliberate about choosing a home base and staying with it and really getting clear about kind of the essential as a Buddhism, which is, you know, that there's these forces that are trying to, in a sense, pull you away from you choose something to pay attention to, like the breath, and it's craving and aversion. You know, you're you get bored of the breath, or you get you, a thought comes and the thought is so tantalizing you want to follow it, or um, for whatever reason, this sitting with the feeling of the breath or sitting with the sound becomes like very hard, and we often don't even realize we've slipped off, and it's really because of these forces that are pulling you away. And so the um, you know the tr traditionally in in like a, at least in a Buddhist meditation, but really in almost any tradition of meditation it starts with really focusing on the concentration piece which really helps it creates a very powerful stable calm mind um and the concentration can be narrow like just one thing you're staying on but never tight you always want to be very relaxed but it can also be very broad you can have think of it like an orange juice the amount of the concentration of orange juice the concentrate is really really concentrated like it's all right here or you can have more like a delusion where you put the water in and the, the concentration is wider and broader. But this, it's a very useful practice sometimes just to, to sit and just try to play a game. Like how long can I just stay either in this broad just beingness and notice when I'm being pulled away and that when like something's bothering me and I'm like, I don't want to do that or I want to do that or I need to do that or all the ways in which we get, we caught that, that we get pinballed around in our life that cause so much suffering. Um, and just being like, oh, uh, interesting. What happens if I let that go? Or in a more narrow sense, you're just with the breath or a sound and you just, can I just stay with it consistently? And when I get pulled away, what's pulling me away? You know, I get lost for a moment and I'm like sucked into a really enticing thought or a, a this, or I, I really decide that this, I'm too uncomfortable. I can't do this anymore. Or I find this too boring, you know? And, and so the idea that occasionally checking in with that basic part of meditation is really valuable. And that's what I'm going to do tonight. I'll kind of practice in that, in that way too, uh, just to help. And it's great for developing, you know, focus. The more you do this practice, the more the, the capacity just to focus on what matters and uh, notice the things that are pulling you away improve. So um, that was what I was thinking this evening. Of course, you don't have to um, do any of that. <laughs> you can just lay down and relax and, or look at the window or, um, you know, you get you, meditation can be for what you need, and sometimes we just need rest or we just need a, a real break. Um, but I'll I'll offer this practice um, just in a very easygoing way, like the the very the very lightly how to how to develop this concentration piece without it being a big deal or being too intense. Because of course, the the wandering coming back is part of it, and you you notice that it's kind of pleasurable. You can see the drift, see the come back, and getting curious of what pulls you away is really, really, really uh, a key move in life. Uh, so that's what I was thinking. Uh, appreciate everybody who's here. <clears throat> Apologize again for tardiness. I hear everything seems okay up there. 
I got the two boys and they're, man, it's gnarly right now. Um, okay. What do we got here? All right, friends, let's do this. Nice to have you here, Joanne. Okay. So you can start with, you know, eyes can be open or closed, whatever's comfortable for you. In terms of movement versus stillness, you know, sitting in stillness can help us get extra concentrated. Uh, lying down too, although you might, there's always risk of falling asleep, but generally having a straight spine, whether you're supported in a chair or a sofa or, you know, leaning back in your bed, it just helps keep, stay alert. And uh, if you're moving and you can't move, you know, you can do a slow movements like you're doing the dishes or you're uh, stretching or something. Just try to make the movements really slow and deliberate. You can make the movement itself, the sensory experience of that, um, you know, the feeling of movement in the muscles. And that can become the meditation object, you know. <clears throat> but regardless, a few slow, deliberate Breath to start. As you breathe in, stretch up or stretch out. And as you breathe out, that can be the, that is the settling motion. The, and, you know, any tension in the body ends up being tension in the mind. So it can kind of be delivered at the beginning about, can you breathe out any tension here? Can you, can you take a, a few moments to, just deliberately soften any worry lines in your forehead. Loosen the jaw. And then just noticing the shoulders. Often we don't notice till we put our attention there. Oh yeah, actually I'm kind of tightened. They're kind of I'm holding something there. Can you loosen? Loosen through the throat, the chest, the belly. The belly be soft and open so you're not trying to hold in your gut. You're not trying to grip any muscles. It's just imagine the whole central axis of your spine like a pole. Everything is just like a hanger. It's hanging off the pole. The shoulders are the hanger and the spine is the, the post. And it's just that kind of draped down quality. And then we can find a certain quality of relaxation too in the way we're relating to experience. So, you know, we're not trying to brace against sounds we don't like or block them out or we're not trying to, we're not kind of half holding our breath, trying to pull away from an uncomfortable body part or tightening it. So what would happen if you just kind of let go of any resistance to sounds or sensations or thoughts. So it's all just part of what's happening, this flexing field of inner sight and outer sight and inner sounds and outer sounds and emotional body sensations. It's all just one field. And you just let it be as it is. In fact, you can welcome it. So some people like this stance, this basic of just sitting and being a body, not doing anything other than that, just letting yourself get really simplified for a while. And that's fine. That's a good place to be. And it can help to 
work with a home base to get extra to help get settled to a home base becomes is sort of this this thing you'll always come back to and the more you commit to it the more the mind kind of um gets absorbed in it and then uh, things settle on the outside and there's this um this um uh, kind of stability and uh, pliancy in the mind that begins to emerge so i like the breath as a home base the feeling of it in my belly or in my nose i like working sometimes with the sensation of my hand a warmth in my hands or a point in the belly point in the heart different things the feeling of the ground under you more sound you know key to a home base is is it a little bit enjoyable do you, do you like spending time with it if it's like i really don't like the breath then don't go there you choose something that for whatever reason you're a little bit drawn to even if it's just shade above neutral And then the idea is once you commit to something, just sink in and we'll, it's kind of like a game here for this particular sit in particular. What happens if you just stay with one home base, the whole rest of the sit and get curious, what's going to pull you off at it? It seems so simple for a few beats. You just stay with the sensation of breathing or but then something happens. But what is that something? You notice you come back, so I'll come back in a bit. And so we're just sitting and hanging out with some simple home base, or just sitting and being, or laying down and being, or however you're organized. And the idea is like, how can you stay with this home base, but not in a tight way, not a notice if your face is like straining, it's not effortful, more leisurely, like it's the least amount of effort you can expend staying present with this thing really and the curiosity helps and the kind of intuit feeling can you feel the soft part of the breath or the underbelly of the sound or tingles in the sensation and you're getting into it 
And if your mind wanders, you notice you bring it back. And you recommit. And it's a practice of sustained attention, sort of continuity flowing into this home base. Inevitably, distractions happen, and sometimes they happen because you know, we just it's the home base is not exciting enough. You know, there's a thought that pulls us in, or sometimes it's you know we we deliberate about turning our attention somewhere we don't want to be here, but most of the time it just kind of captures us. So you notice, you, know, you come back, recommit in a good-natured way. So if you got a lot of mind, like, you know, people like me with more ADHD, it can, it can help to um, count the breaths, for example, like do something that takes up more of the mind bandwidth. So if you're with a breath, you start to count it as well, or, or you count it in, you have a visualization of the, uh, the breath as a kind of infinity symbol coming up, or like a wave going up and down the beach or, you know, whenever you have a lot of mind, you just give it more of something to do. So you're still, you're noticing the feeling of the breath, but you're also counting and it is a visual or if it's sound, you're you kind of kind of visualization around the sound and you could <clears throat> do something like that. 
or if you're really feeling jumpy with your attention, you can do kind of one pointed thing where you just this one sound over here, you hear it, take note, and then you go to a body sensation, feel that, switch to the next thing. It's not the same as the sustained concentration, but you're still building a kind of mindful attention. And that's good. So you work with what you got. Otherwise, just stay with the home base.
so you can still be with your home base and just remind that there's an even more fundamental part of meditation, which is just being. <laughs> it's not about being able to be really tight on a home base or all well, that can be a way to get settled. What it is is about just noticing this this body, this life, just being here, being present for it, listening, being available to life. So if there's any strain at all, any agenda, just let that go now. And just let yourself be here as you are. How totally can you accept here? Yourself, your experience, your body, this moment. I'm not trying to get anywhere other than here. And then with our loving kindness piece, just kind of feeling the kindness of, doing, of doing that. Just really letting yourself be as you are, not trying to put any judgments over anything. And you kind of let, start to extend the kindness outward treating different people in your life just trying to see them as they are accepting them as they are not trying to make them anything different or push them towards something just as they are children animals family friends partners. just finish with like, uh, you know, 30 seconds or a minute of just appreciating anything right now, just the feeling of being in this body, appreciating sensations, sounds, this community, connection, the practice, whatever it is. Say thank you if you like, or just feel thankful for whatever you want to be thankful for.
friends. Man, I needed that. All right. Nicely. Okay. Price frame. <laughs> How about this center? Smell it to anyone else. Feel a tug from your wandering thought, not wanting to let you go back to meditating. <sighs> I definitely feel that. Thoughts like, no, I don't want to go back there. This is so good. I'm just working out this problem. Oh, I'm right there. I might lose this thought. This thought's important. And it really is, seems important. Thanks for all the kind words, friends. Now Pamela's guiding CC tomorrow night. She's awesome. If you've never sat with her, it's a real pleasure. We have a mind bod pod of Locke Kelly, which is a great episode. If you're into non-dual pointing out, it's all about having 51% of your attention on the wide open space of awareness at all times, <laughs> which is the best. Um, Glad it was calm, Peggy. Oh, thanks, Ruth. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about that. You know, it's kind of, actually, the reason I was thinking about it is I was hanging out with this friend of mine on the weekend, this idea of giving your brain more to do. Uh, you could Google him. He's this freaking amazing artist based in Montreal, James Patterson. He's a great meditator, and he's but he's really, really intense and smart. And he can't just count breaths because he eventually masters that and then his mind gets bored and he can do it in the background. So he, so he keeps upping the game and giving his mind more to do. So he follows the breath and he visualizes patterns of one dot, two dot, three dot, four dot in different colors and different combinations going up to 10 and then down to two and then up to eight and then down to three and then up to eight. He just, he'll do that. So it's like it, it totally absorbs him. But he needs a more more to do for his mind to get that concentrated. <clears throat> um, so you know that's kind of a trick, you know, and that's why people do breath counting. It's to give it, you just give a little bit, take up more. Of that. If you've got a lot of busy thoughts, and you use a, a, a bigger instrument, you know. Uh, so it's a good trick. Nice Emily, meditating in the earthquake. Earthquake of young boys. Lots more. Okay, hello, friends. Yeah, sunsets are back, Cashew. Hey, Deanna, the end of a breastfeeding journey in motherhood. Oh, wow, that is a big deal. I remember when Sarah, she had a lot of grief around that. Um, well, I mean, I think there, it's always helpful in meditation to, you know, connect with a, a guide or a community of people who really can understand the specific experience. So I can see really the, the deep value of that. And you could try Googling that. I don't know any specific um meditating mums who have a practice around that but i'm sure they're there they're out there but of course the general principles are the same of working with any challenging emotion grief you know whatever it is um which is just to really let yourself feel it and to notice how you're feeling it and how you don't want to feel it and what happens if you kind of give yourself that permission to to let it be here and when it gets really strong, you can kind of titrate it. You can pull back or you can rest, you know, rest or do something else or put your attention somewhere else. Uh, but that is kind of a general piece of advice. But I would try looking around because it would be cool to have a practice guided by a, someone who went through that exact thing. Because just, 
that's where you really feel seen, you know, or understood. And that would be my advice there. So I don't have anyone I can refer you to, but I think I know there are motherhood, just motherhood meditations, or I know there's a bunch of podcasts on motherhood and um, meditation, I think, at least one. All right, friends, I'm, I'm taking off. Uh, see you next week. Good to hang out with you. Wishing you all the best for the week. Very grateful for this community. Oh, Valentina, the eclipse was mind blowing. We got it. We were right in the path of totality. And it was like full, full situation. <laughs> we got the whole thing. You know, like minute and a half of complete darkness. Total co- corona. Skies cleared. It was, we went an hour south of Toronto. Sick. My son went ballistic. Okay. Bye, everybody.